friends, Catherine here. I'm going to be braiding another paracord bracelet today without a clasp because I prefer them without a clasp. I've got clasps, I just prefer not to use them. Um, I have pre-melted the ends again because I learned that lesson. And this is about eight feet of paracord. Um, I've found the center. What I did was I actually held the ends up and then hooked a thumb through the middle and just ran it to the ends of my arms there. My arms are a little long, longer than eight feet from side to side, so that works out for me. Um, and we are going to be doing a snake knot today. So we've got this loop and we've got a right side and a left side. Uh, let's run this out towards me. All right, so we've got a right side and a left side. To do the snake knot, what you're going to do is bring the left side over the right side so that it crosses, and then under the right side. So you've got this kind of funky pretzel looking shape. At least it looks like a pretzel to me. So we've got the left side wrapped around, but the right side's pretty much where it always was, and the left side ends up back on the left again. So that's over and under. Then we're going to take the right side and take it under the left side that's sticking off the left again and through the original loop that we made in the front. And then pull that down tight and it should, if everything works out, and I really hope it does because I've never done this knot before, um, pull down into this wavy front and back kind of thing. And it did, which is awesome, so it works. Perfect. Okay, we're going to tighten it down way down to the end while not sliding it off the end. Not. <laughs> it's punny. Um, so we're going to <laughs> slide it down to the end without sliding it off of the end, as close and as tight as we can make it. Um, because that's going to be the end that we hook our other, our, our ends that we end up with through. So without sliding it off the end, we need to make it as close as we can because we want it to be tight so that it holds the tension when it's worn on the wrist. And then we just take and do that same process over again, over and under for the left side. And then with the right side, under, and through. And then when we pull it tight, it should snug, if I don't twist it around, hopefully, snug right up to itself. Well, to the previous one anyway, and kind of lift up and in. There we go up and in and keep it tight and pull it as close to the previous one as we can get it like snug it right up close and that is our pattern my friends we're just gonna keep doing that until it reaches the length that we want and then stop this one i think once you get the hang of it will be pretty easy like i said i haven't ever tried this one before but I got like two seconds of instruction and I'm ready to go. So I think you should be able to do it too. And actually, if I'm bringing it around the back, I can just go over the top and that'll be even faster. All right, and then pull it through. And don't let that go. It would probably help if I attached this to something so that I had some tension that I could pull against, but I haven't. I haven't ever done it before, and I don't have something here to attach it to now, so perhaps next time. There's really something interesting about this one because it ends up round. Like, you can see it, it ends up round. Go snug everything up together, and moving on. Just making sure that it doesn't slide off of that end loop there, but making sure that that end loop is as small as possible. And then let's 
Aha, figured that out. Now it's over and behind. And now this one, I can go behind and I do have to find the end on that still. I haven't figured out a faster way to do it. But over and behind and then through. And now we have a knot. Well, we can tighten it down and it'll be a knot anyway. I don't know that it's a knot before it's been tightened down. That's an interesting of thought. If it hasn't been tightened down yet, so it's not holding itself in place yet, is it a knot yet? Or is it not a knot? Oh, I think it's gotten twisted somehow. But anyway, you can see it while it's open. It's got these two that are coming out the middle and then wrapping around themselves so that you can, if you can get it tightened down, go that one and then that one, get it into place and snug it up to the previous one and tighten it down. That is not snug. Let's loosen it back up and try again. So maybe it, maybe it got twisted. No, that can't be. Let's see. Well, just press it up and tighten it. Might have to undo this one and just try again. No, well, that worked out. All right, but I do have it flipped over upside down. Go, okay, and then same thing over again. Same thing, take this one behind and through. There we go, I think this one's gonna, I think this one's gonna be more time consuming than the ones that we've done before. That's all right though, it'll be fine. I just do think it's going to take an extra moment to figure out. Go. There we are. Okay. And then just lift that one up and put it through. See, this is one of the drawbacks of working with this much length is that it ends up all over the place. And then sometimes things don't go the right way. That did not end up right. All right, try again. Okay, over and behind. And then behind and through. Try again. There we go. That's turning out better. Okay, and then just tighten it down close to the previous knot. And it's coming along. I definitely do think that this one's going to be slower than previous projects though, and I don't know that it's using up as much paracord as the wider ones do. So this probably isn't going to take as much length to do it. I might, I might should have used a shorter one, but oh well, it'll work out. Go. and then just kind of tighten it down, nudge it up into place, and you can do other things with these too. They don't just have to be bracelets, although I like bracelets, so that's what I'm doing. Um, but you could also do like lanyards or zipper pulls or um, 
pretty much anything you can think of that you might want a length of something holding it together. Um, could do, I don't, I don't even know, bad backpack straps. You could make backpack straps. Those that would take a lot of paracord, but if you've got it, why not use it? Go. Probably wouldn't do this one. I would do one of the faster ones, maybe, because this one is definitely going to be a more time-consuming one. But I do still like that it's round. And it's definitely, yeah, it's completely cylindrical. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Cylindrical. Okay. That ends up being faster. I definitely do recommend that just going over the top of your project if you don't have it attached to something. Uh, if, you have if you have it attached to something, then obviously that's not going to work. But if you don't have it attached to something, just going right over the top of it should be just fine. There we go. And then tighten it down. And snug it up to the previous knot, hopefully, sort of, kind of, maybe, there we go, snug it up, make it be friends, and then do the next one. There we are, and tighten her down, and all the way tight and snug as a bug in a rug, and next one. I definitely notice this is slow going, but gives you good insight into what I'm doing. Go. And I'd like to turn it on its end for tightening it down. I don't know why, that just seems to be the way that it ends up for me. That's all right. And good. Okay. And that is turning out pretty good. You can tell? I'm liking it so far. It's obviously not long enough for a bracelet yet, although if you're doing like a zippable or something, it would be too long at this point. Um, but like, you know, make it for whatever project you're doing it for. Make it extra long. Use thinner paracord. Use embroidery floss. Make a make a necklace with the snake knot of from embroidery floss. Why not? That would work. I'm pretty sure that would work. Uh, it wouldn't be as strong as paracord, naturally, but no reason not to. There we go. Okay. There we are. And now that I've gotten the hang of this, it's going a little bit faster too. Still not as fast as the previous ones, but a little bit faster nonetheless. And these loops are kind of going strange. Probably because I'm wrapping it over the top so the paracord's getting twisted. I might have to let the twist out of it. In fact, I think I will. I might have to let the twist out of it. So if you just hold it up high and then shake it a little bit with the ends loose, they should relax back out and the twist should drop out of it. There we go. 
That should help, hopefully. Who knows? We shall see. There we are. And tighten down. Basically, what it ends up being is that the two strands are looped around each other in a kind of flat way. Near as I can tell, anyway. That's what it ends up being. Kind of like that. You can see. Ooh, that's kind of stretchy. Interesting. It's probably because I'm not tightening it enough. I should probably tighten it tighter. Tighten the knots down harder. Well, I'm not undoing it. That's not a thing that's going to happen. But it's something to bear in mind for future projects if I decide to do this knot again. And it's always good to learn new things. Try new skills. Figure things out. Because if you don't, someone else will, and then you're just out of the loop. <laughs> Man, I'm, that's another pun. Practically punny today. There we go. Okay. And this is ending up a little bit longer. Going good so far, I think. Well, coming along well so far, I think. Go. There we go. All right, scrunch it down. Try the next one. Pull it through. And which one? This one has extra length. And then that one goes in sight. And then just make sure that it's not actually wrapped around the previous knot. Because I think that could be a thing that happens if I'm not careful. Go. Okay. And then keep going. And that's the thing about these. It's repeated action. Which is nice, I think. Because once you learn how to do it, you can just keep on doing it. And by the end of this, you, you should be able to tie this knot. Well, having seen it enough times, at least. There we go. Again. And this is getting shorter now, which is good. We're about halfway down the length of paracord, but it's definitely more paracord than we needed. go and then tighten the whole thing down sort of close to the previous knot hopefully come on you which that one okay and that one then that one again then that one again. There we go. Let's kind of work it into place. Okay. One. And two. And don't ride up. Mm-hmm. And 
tightened down. Come on you, all the way. See this one, and then this one, then both of them. Tight. There we go. Okay. It's twisting a little bit because I've got this section right here that's looser, but I can just kind of twist it back into place. So whatever. It'll work out. All right. Over and behind. Over and behind. And through. There we go. And it's long enough now that it'll lay flat against the table. So that might help. Can't guarantee it will, but it might. Over and behind. Over and behind. And through. I think I have the most trouble when it starts turning on me while I'm pulling it tight. I think that's what's causing the most problems. But if I try and pull one side and then the other, that reduces that. Because if I try and pull both sides, it's just twisting in the direction that it uh, that they are leading off in. All right. So this, I think, is a good view from the top of what this knot looks like. This goes through this loop, and this goes through this loop. And then you just tighten them both down. Until they snug up to the previous knot. And then let's check that bracelet for length. Let's see what we've got. Okay, not quite as long as I would like it to be, but getting there, getting closer. Okay. This side ends up, eh, not really. I mean, it's a little bit shorter, but I might just not have pulled them evenly. I was thinking this side was much shorter than the other one, but it's not really. It's only a little, um, but now they're short enough that I can just let the bottom or the right one behind the left one without going over the top, which might make it easier. We'll see. There we go. Although I do still like going over the top with the left one, so we'll see how it goes. It's ending up a little twisted and weird, but I don't know. For a first try at this knot, I'm not mad at it. And eight feet was probably the right length to actually go with, given how short the ends are getting before I'm done here. Which is interesting, because you wouldn't think it would be, given that it's not as wide as the other ones, the other bracelets that we've done. Go, if you guys are making along with me, which I encourage you to do. Oh, I don't think I've ever said that before. Make along with me, you guys. Make things. That's, that's my whole purpose here, is to share the things that I'm making with you and to encourage you to make them too. Make things out of things that you find. It doesn't have to be paracord uh, to make bracelets out of this. Whatever you've got. I wouldn't necessarily recommend something stretchy like yarn for this particular project, but thread or embroidery floss or like um, a, a very thin plasticine rope. Um, 
whatever you have that's that's handy and readily available. Make make things. Make all kinds of things. There we go. Coming along. Okay. And then up behind the left one and through the original loop and pull down tight. Yeah, this is ending up a little strange looking, but not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, that's what it's supposed to look like, sort of. Mostly, anyway. All right. Let's see. Behind and over and through and tighten it down. And this is also going faster now that I don't have to deal with such long ends. Which is nice. Part of the, the time that things take, a significant part of the time that things take, is just pulling the ends through. And the ends are getting shorter and the snake is getting longer. So let's test it for length again. Come on you, grab the other end. There we go. All right, and that is perfect, if not even a little bit too long, but that's all right. We will end it up. So we're gonna pull that last knot extra tight just to be sure it stays in place. And then what we're going to do is just take both these ends and shove them through that loop that we left here. Uh, so we're going to use our handy dandy skewer. If you had a fid or something, this would be the time to use it. I don't personally own a fid. This is a new hobby to me. This is only the third paracord bracelet I've ever made. I have made friendship bracelets in my life though, and it's basically the same. All right, one end through. Now the other end through, come on you. Without slipping and stabbing myself. That's always a consideration, so be careful about that. And then even them up and leave it a length that you can pull through your hand, uh, pull your wrist through, or your hand through. Maybe even that one. Let's try. Let's see if we can get our hand back out through that. And we can, awesome. So we're gonna tie it off at that length. It doesn't take very much. All right, and I like to use just a simple knot. There are plenty of complicated knots out there that you can end things off with, but I'm not a complicated kind of person. I'm actually more, for someone who makes as much things as I do, I'm actually kind of lazy. But there you have it. That's what it is. Um, so that's the extra give that it needs to be able to get over my hand and cinch down to that size for my wrist and then Trim off the ends and set the excess aside for something else maybe and then melt those ends so that they don't fray. There we go, just a little melty. They don't have, it doesn't take very much. It doesn't need a lot of melting, just a little bit. There we go and that's it. A snake knot paracord bracelet. 
that is adjustable can be tightened so that it doesn't slide off of your wrist, but also doesn't have a huge long tail either. <laughs> this is what I did today, guys. I would love to hear what you're doing today. If you want to let me know, there's a convenient place for that in the comments down below. And remember to subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye!